been watching and listening to American Liberty Live, and we've been delighted tonight um, to be with our special guest, Lori Anderson. And um, we were talking before the break about uh, just the difference in communities, um, you know, where they have gun control or, or don't have it. And, you know, places like Chicago are just absolutely just overrun with crime. Uh, and then you're talking about like Kennesaw, Georgia, that is really crime free, you know, yeah. uh, because of a policy, I guess, that everybody has to have a gun there. So, right. It's an ordinance. Yeah. It is an ordinance. Um, I believe it's 1985, I believe, is when they passed the ordinance. Right. And I grew up about, oh, maybe 30 minutes from there, maybe 30 minutes from Kennesaw. Oh, see, if I had lived that close, I would have been living in Kennesaw. Right. See, I was <laughs> I was in Roswell, Georgia, which is, you know, just straight across, you know, on the mm -hmm. north side of Atlanta. Right. And, um, you know, we would go out there. Uh, there was Lake Altoona. You know, there's, you know, like a boat that you could ski on and stuff like that. I mean, a, a lake. Right. Um, but, you know, there, that's the proof out there. So when you see any of these pushy, you know, these pushes out there, uh, to get rid of guns from the population because they're quote unquote dangerous, you know there's another purpose because all the data says exactly the opposite, right? Right, and and not only that, the law abiding citizens usually um, fire once, maybe twice in self defense. They use self defense approximately 2.5 million times a year. Right. And um, looking at, and I'm not saying all law enforcement. Um, I'm not anti-law enforcement, by the way. I am anti-corruption. So, yeah. um, But you have law enforcement that will fire 130 bullets at unarmed people. Right. Um, you know, we, we need to get back control of what's going on, and I firmly believe it starts with each and every one of us as individuals. Right. It, it really does. And um, an armed society is definitely a polite society. Ab absolutely. All right, so we're going to open this up. If you guys would like to be on the air uh, and ask a few questions here of Lori about what she knows about Jade Helm or comment on any of the things we've been talking about here tonight, um, you can add American Liberty Live as a Skype contact and call in that way. And you can also call our phone number, which is 352-436-0010, uh, 352-436-0010. Um, and if you just want to let me know you want to be on, I know I've got one person here, uh, the old Marine One, Vaughn. He's wanting to come in on this call. Uh, so let's get Vaughn in here. All right. Well, we still got the dots. There we go. You on here, Vaughn? Yes. Hello, Vaughn. How are you? Well, hello. How are you doing, Lori? <laughs> I am doing well. It is nice to um, be able to speak with you. You too. It's uh, you know uh, I've uh, tried to catch you on uh, Facebook and back and forth on email, but I understand you're busy and I've been busy uh, doing videos and trying to get this message out. Right. That we need to halt to this problem. Absolutely. We we've, we've got to get this stopped, and I, I firmly believe. The way that we have to get it stopped is we have to expose the psychological operation side of it. Because I don't think people are going to be so apt to go along when they realize that they are literally being manipulated, um, including our military guys um, and our gals in the military as well. Right. Um, you know, I'm an ex-military wife, so... Um, I know how faithful they really are, and uh, that's why I constantly say in every radio show that I do, do not take this as an attack on our military guys. This is a warning to the military guys. They need to realize what's going on, too, and there's a lot of compartment, excuse me, compartmentalization going on, so they're not being let know that they're actually even part of this um, PSYOP, and that bothers me. Right. Well, I know it's like I expressed last night with Jeff, or no, the night before, that uh, the importance of getting this message out and letting people know what's happening. I, I, I've done a thought here, 
And I'm under the, the uh, impression that more than probably 80% of this country does not even cl have a clue this operation is happening. We've right, got right. individuals right now making phone calls to their, uh, to their police department and to their county commissioners. And this is the thing we need to express to people that are in some of these zones and also in the rest of the country and, and just ask a simple question. Uh, is this, you know, this, is this actually happening? Right. Absolutely. And, you know, the county sheriffs, they're the ones who can stop it. They right. really can. Right. And, you know, it's people like Richard Mack that are out there, you know, Constitutional Sheriff's Association, and they're teaching these guys, uh, they're teaching the sh a lot of the sheriffs across America, you know, it's your constitutional obligation right. to uh, protect your populations, right, and to defend the Constitution, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's, Absolutely. Where I, that's where I see it from uh, my point and all the other uh, uh, people out here that have the ability to get out in front of the camera and... Uh, speak to people you know uh, sometimes I speak pretty harsh but that's the marine in me but by nature I'm a I'm a pretty calm person right Jeff <laughs> yeah yeah it's fun it, it's fun to see Vaughn when he gets all hyped up too because it's like something explodes and then all of a sudden he turns into a kitten it's the funniest thing I've ever seen he's like and it's like hello <laughs> well you know what I'll say this Vaughn it is very very nice that um, political correctness goes out the window every once in a while it's great and i've watched your videos as well and i love them yeah i like Vaughn's videos you don't too. sugarcoat yeah. it um and that's what the problem is there's been so much sugarcoating in the united states of america for so long people they have no clue what's going on because of the sugarcoating so thank you for that and by the way i want to thank you for your service well thank you for carrying and and thank you for supporting a person of the military as well, with the children and everything else, Lori. That's that's important. Uh, family established and children grown and having grandchildren is an amazing thing. Awesome. And that's what yeah. we want for the rest of this country, to have the freedom to do and teach our children the right things. And okay. we don't need the military or the government to uh, involve themselves. And I think this, this episode that's about to happen could be just upside down for this whole country, and they don't know it. Right, right. I'm concerned about that, too. We got another caller in here, Jeff. We do. Hey, we, yeah, we Kathy do. Carlos is on the phone. I'm sorry. We do. We've been joined by Kathy. Do you have a question for I was guests? just listening. I have just one question. You know, I was, I was watching Jeff's video last night with um, the, the committee on the city that was allowing this to happen. Yeah, those guys were brain dead. I'm just telling you right now. I, I can't believe they didn't ask any of the questions I would have asked before I granted permission. I know, and actually I was, I was very astounded. Do you, do you believe that these guys were paid by the federal government? To do what they're doing, I kind of that's kind of the first thing that came up to my well, head. Well, isn't the hundred and fifty thousand really a payment? You take a little county <laughs> like that, right, and you're going to come in and you're going to give them a hundred and fifty grand. So is that what I didn't hear that part, Jeff? I did not hear that part. Well, well that's what their documentation says yeah. is the impact on each on each community. So right. Um, so they went and sold their sold their souls to the devil is what they did. The 30 pieces of silver was offered and taken, yes. Right, right. I mean, because it, I, I, it, I mean, I watched those guys, Kathy, and they were just brain dead. I mean. I know. I, I, I watched the too, Jeff. I, I was silent last night. And they night. had I one resident that stood up and really said how the cow ate the cabbage, and nobody paid her any attention whatsoever. How the cow ate the cabbage. That's a Georgia you know thing. Times, right. Jeff, no, no, that is not a Georgia thing. I have said that so many times. And these Georgians don't understand that. I'm from freaking California. Everybody I knew in North Georgia knew that to say. How the cow eats a cabbage. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. Well, that's, hey, a, Kathy, that's a term I use. Yeah. Kathy, there's, yes. a, there's a thing out here right now with one of your congressmen on Facebook that he's telling We're you, here in Georgia? Yes, ma'am. And telling, and telling everybody to get prepared because this is may go upside down. 
Now, there's no verification to this. I've got the video on my channel, and it's coming to A major upside down for what? Who, who am I speaking to? It's this the is, old Marine one. Okay, yeah. okay. Is this on your Zeekly TV channel or your YouTube it, channel? It's on YouTube. I haven't had a chance to get anything over on Zeekly TV. It's on YouTube. You'll see it. YouTube, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> put that. That's funny. <laughs> Eleven, almost twelve thousand uh, views. Yeah, I think we're doing all right. A million views over there. I think we're doing all right yet, Jeff. <laughs> YouTube. What's YouTube? <laughs> hey, Jeff I keep, I keep, tell, I keep telling you guys is what you choose to support. You know, so if you want, if you want in the hey, NSA, Jeff, you keep. You. If you, yeah, I'm just saying we keep supporting Google. We'll keep getting the NSA in our business. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've gone through some. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know how long they're going to put up with me. But anyway, it's it's pretty serious. The uh, the video, he explains the situation, and he's alerting people to uh, be ready. And uh, apparently he either ran for Congress or he is a congressman, but his name is there, his Facebook, and all the information on that video. And uh, I don't know if I put that in your feed or not, Jeff. No, I don't a, think um, so. And who is he? Is he federal government or a state state government? Gee, I don't know. Oh, okay. All I see was the alert and uh, anything involving this uh, this Jade Helm 15, and somebody is is bringing out some information. You know, uh, time will tell this place where it belongs. But right now, people have to. We have to keep the energy going. You know, and we, well, if, if it's not right, we'll take it down. But yeah, you know, right. You, you know, Jeff, it's just like your guest host tonight. Um, she is a smart cookie. I could tell that there within, you go. There you go. A, yeah, yeah, I could tell it real. You know, a smart person knows a smart person. She's smart. She does her reading. She knows what she's talking about. That's okay. why I told and, our, and that's scary. That's, and that scares people. That's Jeff. why I told our Lori, uh, text one on one. I said, get her on the air for Wednesday if she can do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that that scares people. They don't want to know. And it's just like when I call in. When I call in. I've done, I, I don't just call in and put up stuff. I know that I've done my research and, you know, I, I've, I've paid a lot of attention. I don't get it from one source or two sources. Now, obviously, this young lady, I would say young lady to me, she Thank got, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you, you're, you're way better than me on a computer or whatever. You, you know what you're doing. You're smart. I could tell in like a few minutes after you started speaking that you knew that you did your research as smart. And that's just something that people don't do. They don't take the time right. to get the information that they need to know whether it's true or right. Mm-hmm. And Jeff has corrected me on this many times through this last year. Yeah, because I, I really I really try and stick to those investigative journalistic standards also. You know, I, I don't really, I don't want to sensationalize things, and I want to let all the facts come in before you really go overboard and make a judgment. And, um, you know, but that's the right way to do it. If, you're, if you are a truth seeker, that's right. the right way to do it. Can approach everything in a careful, measured way and make sure you get information, get it corroborated. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure you're going to air with something responsibly. Yeah, but you still got to remember there's only one truth, and that's the Lord himself. The rest of yep. us are Well, life. that's why we're all here, right? Absolutely. That's right. That's mm-hmm. how it well, who brings us together? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Now, Vaughn, let me ask you a question. Yes, um, I'm getting ready to ask you this because this is, in my opinion, the perfect, aside from the PSYOP part, I mean, even though it's included in it, is this not, or is this, um, in your opinion, the perfect divide and conquer? I see so many avenues that this operation is going to create. Uh, it could uh, it could be chasing the the bush for the uh, uh, regime that's running around playing soldier. It could be a division like was laid out, where you've got it set up as basically uh, how a Russian uh, military would look at it, like Iran and so on and so forth. 
Mm-hmm. It it just takes on so many things, and psychologically to the American people, I'm sorry, uh, this is not a flag waving event. This is mm-hmm. a uh, this is a forceful event upon uh, a situation that's never had this activity, because it, otherwise it would be senseless to go into a, an operation where people are familiar. So this right. is a unfamiliar operation to anyone involved in it. So all they're going to see is in the middle of the night, that's a, that's the crazy part about this, is that they're going to be awakened. They're going to be right, frightened. Right. And, they're go- and they've already been told there's going to be people that are going to be there that are not even going to be in a uniform. So that's right. going to really throw a mix into this. And, and their excuses, they want a response from people out there, how they would report this in, and then run this through a master computer and, and figure out the, the uh, psychological right. ability of the American people to mm-hmm. respond to Dude. being taken over. Right. Why that's else are they doing this to be taken over? And that's where they're headed with this. Uh, you know what? Let me say something. We Americans are pretty damn strong. Trust yeah. me, there's a lot of strong Americans. Uh, oh, you, I wish we were all like you. I Kathy. know. I'm so optimistic. No, Kathy. I know. There's so many people out there doesn't even know this is going on, and that's the sad part about no, it. No, I know, I know. Well, how do I know? I'm a freaking hairdresser. Uh, yeah, but you're 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 linked. The Lord's got you linked to know, but so many people don't know. There's a veil okay. across this country's eyes, and the and the ones in power know this, and they're taking total advantage of it. Well, they put the yeah. veil yeah. there, they, Vaughn. They they they, they, will come in, they they will come in like a thief in the night and take everything. They, you Put the veil there on purpose. They're, you're missing yeah. it. They, of course, they know it's there because they they made sure we don't get in our schools anymore any any knowledge for our kids about our founding and our rights and our civil liberties and all that. And they and they make sure that the news media now doesn't get the truth out. On oh, everything. and that's so true. Sorry, Jeff. I had to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that the news media is dumbed. It's so true. Oh my God! So they put did. the veil there, Vaughn. I mean, you know. So yes, they did, yeah. and it was a deliberate attempt. And, it, and it's been highly effective. Figure. It's been highly effective, I might add. They've been doing this for years, Jeff. Yeah. And we know it. Anybody that follows just how things run, each each campaign, because we haven't had a war since World War II. We've had campaigns. The Korean was a campaign. Everything that you can think of where we have been involved in, in a conflict with another country or people with military force has been a campaign because it's not legally been classified as a war through Congress. Right. This right now is a campaign war upon American people, if you look at it according to the Constitution, because it breaks everything that is constitutional. I know uh, uncertain last night or the other night Chris was trying to make a statement that he couldn't find anything constitutional. Well, I'm telling him it is unconstitutional. You could twist the words the way you want, but it was intended the way it was written to cover every avenue that the military has no business mingling Well, and we've seen a lot of retired military top brass come out in the last week, and they're very upset about this, and they're they're saying this is a war on America. So when you're seeing ex-colonels and, you know, people like that coming out, you know, there, there's reason to be alarmed when those guys are alarmed for sure, you know. Um, I'm not even sure they know why they're alarmed, to be honest with you. They're just patriots, and they just do what's good for America, but they don't really understand the underlying, you know. Oh, I don't know. A few of them that I've seen on videos have articulated <laughs> yeah. exactly what's going on. So, Well, do you know who Joe Miller is? No, don't know Joe Miller. Okay, he is a uh, senator from Alaska, and he posts on Facebook. Yeah. So they posted this this scathing thing on what's going on with um, America and you know, the war, whatever. Anyway, I put a post in there. I said, you know what? America is the one that's caused the last so many wars, and and I, I came home tonight from work. I didn't get home until 8. I came home from night. I had like four posts from random people I didn't even know. And I so seldom set myself up for this trap. But I was smart enough to put, um, copy and link 
Jeff. You'll be proud of me. I copy the link and put some stuff up there, and um, I followed my uh, my thought. So I did a little bit to try to help America understand what's going on. And, you know, it's all what you and I and everybody on this show agrees with. I didn't put anything up that was, like, crazy. I just said, yay, look at this. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But I had four random people. I don't even know who these people are. I just happened to say, you know what, I don't like this comment. I do not like what this man's saying. He's a conservative from the last, but I'm going to challenge him a little bit, and that's what I did. And, you know, I'm going to probably have the IRS at my front door um, in a couple of days. Well, like John Kennedy said in that speech about the press, you know, the one that has the thing about secret societies, you know, it's it's good to challenge, you know, people in public office, and it, it, it helps everybody think about what they're doing. It keeps the dialogue out there in the public. It gets the concerns out there. And there's, right. there's nothing that happens in that process but good because it helps us be better, right? Right, right. I'm surprised. I'm surprised at myself how I get my um, when I'm really thinking really clear and straight, and I'm like, "When's this bull?" All right. Now let me ask you guys this because we've kind of gotten way down rabbit holes here. Has anybody got while well, we still have uh, Lori Anderson on here? Do either of you guys have any additional questions for her? Uh, while we got her on here as our guest tonight, I did, the one, well, it was about um, the one reason why I called was were these guys, these states, these cities being paid off? And yes, I guess they are, and that's why I called. Right, one hundred and fifty thousand per county, I think it is, and that's crazy. Yeah. And Lori, we also have to have the people to call in and, and, and get a hold of their sheriffs again repeatedly. And uh, get get an answer to this because if the county commissioners are accepting one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and uh, I just sent you a message, Dean, he called into his county sheriff. He he put a call into his county commissioners, but at this time he's in Colorado. At this time they have no data on it. He sent data to them, but the problem lying here is, are are they are they truthful? Okay, right. and I don't know, you know, because maybe they don't. They were told not to to alert the people or the guy that answered that call wasn't aware of it you know maybe the sheriff knows but not some of the deputies are answering the phones i don't know right that's what i'm asking lori do you think possibly because of the psyops of this thing they do not want the sheriffs or the county commissioners to let the people know because they want the people to not know as they carry this operation up because it's supposed to be that kind of an operation well, that's a good question. I do know on some of the county commissioner stuff, they did print it locally, even though I don't think anybody really saw them. Um, I think I sent you copies um, of those articles, but they were very small copies. Um, most time, they'll put those type of things in the back of the newspaper or whatever the case may be, and most people don't see it. Um, yeah, and the one and the guy I that gave think, the presentation to that county commission, he said they had already coordinated with the sheriff. Right, yeah. right. But you also have to remember too, these sheriffs are being dealt with psyops as well. You know, he that Thomas Mead man who is over psychological operations for um, special operations command. I mean, good lord, he can tell them anything and. Oh, this is just regular drill, like right. like what they do with the HSEEP program. We're sure. going to have crisis actors, da 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 da. And him go, you know, the sheriff say, okay, well, thank you for making me aware of this, that, and the other. Um, from the just from the sound of the um, recording that I heard, it didn't sound like there was anything except the county commissioners in there, along with Thomas Mead and one other man. I don't know uh, what his name was, but he was with Thomas Mead. Right. So I think they do want to keep it um, pretty hush hush uh, for several reasons. You're not going to get a proper reaction from the people if they already know what you're doing. Right. So right. they want that element um, to find out what the shock surprise is going to be. They're going to want to find out how the reactions of the people are going to be. And I'm going to tell you one of my concerns about this, too. Okay. You have people who are law abiding citizens who own guns oh yeah all right you have a military guy in civilian clothes in a civilian car let's give a hypothetical that he is shooting one of those guns 
that has blank bullets. Right. And a law-abiding gun owner thinks somebody's life is in danger. The law-abiding gun owner shoots the military guy. Who's going to be responsible for that? Right. Oh, yeah. Who? Lori, because, let, me, let me tell you a scenario, and that, that, that is exactly, exactly what's going to transition. In right, the state right. of Indiana, if somebody comes to my gate, and it doesn't matter if he's a policeman or whoever, I have the right to drop him where he stands if right. I feel threatened. Okay, Florida has the same law. Yeah, they do. Right. It's the Florida so, Castle right. Law, right. And that's what these people are going to do, okay, because we've already brought this scenario to a point where these people are not going to know because nobody is telling because all they seen was that $150,000 and they lost the whole transition of what they're being told. Okay, so now we got this blank on these deer's eyes. The people are in a blank, and the scenario you just described will happen, okay? is What is the odds? Okay, we're going to flip the coin in America with all the gun owners and all the tension and everything they're talking about on the news and all the media and all the crazy stuff that somebody is not going to pull his weapon and fire and think he's doing the right thing and he's actually setting a, 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 an operation that was never meant to be held mm -hmm. on this American soil with citizens. Jade hells. Shit ball. Not that bad. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, a lot of these a lot of these remote farmers and stuff, they don't really pay attention to the T V or anything anyway, you know. So no, they don't even watch T V. Yeah, so they may, they may not even know that this is going so on. Much, right. Because you've got and and you know, they say that it's gonna be blank bullets, but you don't know. But but let's let's say hypothetically it is blank bullets. And they do that scenario with a crisis actor, and the crisis actor is screaming like they're being kidnapped. Well, we need to shoot those crisis actors, sorry to say. They but need no, to be what I'm shot. Saying is you wouldn't, I understand that. You wouldn't know the difference. I understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying is in this scenario, you wouldn't know. Right. Okay? You wouldn't know. So the, the law-abiding person trying to do the right thing to save somebody's life could... Right be stuck in the situation that costs one of our military men or women their lives because of a drill because the people didn't know and were not aware and that is the thing that bothers me then what happens well who, the who would be held accountable for that there was a clause in there where they said that some of them will try to mingle and try to blend with the american people Wait a minute. Talking about foreign troops? Are we talking about Russians that don't speak English? That doesn't really totally understand English, even though they're intelligent? You know, well, you know, they answered that speaking. question in that council meeting, Vaughn, because somebody asked it, and it was a very interesting answer. They said there's no external troops involved in Jade Helm 15, but he left it open that that could change, you know, at some point in the future. And, and really, the way he answered it left it open that they could change that before even this <coughs> exercise started, right? Well, didn't you get that, Lori? I mean, yeah, that's the way I took it. But, but in my opinion, those interagency partners. I mean, you've got a list on the Jade Helm document that twelve hundred of our military are going to be in Texas alone. They don't list the other states. Yeah. They don't tell how many is going to be in the other states. Right. They don't tell the locations in the other states. Right. Why would they go to? Why would they start in Texas? How many Texans? Texans all are gun prepared. Why would? That's my biggest thing. When I heard they were starting in Texas, they didn't I'm start like, going, Texas, Kathy. They started in Florida. Yeah, they're they're in Florida and and. Um, no, I, I I know that. I understand that. I know that. But now they're going to go into Texas and all these. Lower states, California. Forget, they can go in California. I actually can stay in California as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's, you're right, that's Kathy. not nice. And, 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 and like Kathy, <laughs> it is true. Like it Kathy is true. Said, that was the one they spoke of the most. But now I know. I, so now they're going to show up in Texas. That's why first threat. When this all first came out last week, it was all Texas. Right. And, you know, Texas is like the biggest God-fearing, um, gun-owning country of the world. So maybe that's why they're doing it. They want, want to, like, test, you know, 
see what these people are going to do. Shoot, I've been driven off the road in Texas by a guy with a big truck with guns on the back. I I don't know. I don't know. That that part to me is pretty funny. Well, here's some data that to come down the pike. I put a video up from uh, a fellow that's been at this uh, search. He's a God-fearing man, and uh, he's been doing this for almost uh, probably 30, 40 years. And uh, he got some data in that they already got 3,000 troops on the ground in Texas. I thought we were only talking 1,200. How did we get 3,000 troops? See what I'm mm-hmm. saying? See how this is going out of proportion? I don't know. I don't know, Vaughn. I don't know if I can believe that because I think that we get information and, you know, this I, man, Kathy, I, this man wouldn't feed that kind of information. Okay. okay. Doing this longer than he's doing. This, he's been doing this long before there was an internet. So now, are they Russian troops? Is that what he, you heard? Uh, no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. He didn't. Oh, well, I read an article today that there are Russian troops throughout all out this country. No, so. I'm not implying it. It was just the way the wording was that they had to mingle and blend in. I mean, an American soldier don't have to mingle and blend in. I mean, you know, he's at home. He's with his people. If he's, you know, acts right. But if he's got a right. right in his hand and he's full of fatigues and he looks like he's going to take you down, and, and this is where the scenario Lori was talking about that could really go wrong real quick. And, and, you know, say a guy's driving down the street and he's got a 7-millimeter shotgun or a 7-millimeter rifle and is hanging in his back window and he sees this incident, well, he's going to jump out there and he's going to try to stop it because, you know, you would do that. And the next thing you know, this could go way upside down real quick. Yeah. Well, in Texas, the Second Amendment is huge and strong, and people carry their guns. Well, right they made behind. a big deal that they had coordinated with Life Flight and all the local hospitals and all that stuff. So, you know, obviously they're they're planning that there there you know could be some problems. So, if somebody if somebody gets hurt, hurt and dies in this, and our country, because you know, obviously we don't have any media anymore. And nobody's going to know about it. It'll be really sad. And, you know, I keep on waiting every day to hear some stuff that I know that I've read. Um, and I never hear it on the news. Never. Never. And I'm like going, are you kidding me? It's really sad what is going on in this country. Because our news media is owned by, I, from what I read, six major news media is owned by one person. Soros. Now, is that correct, Lori? George Soros. Yeah. He controls. And he has the yeah. controlling. Um, yeah, George Soros. Yep. And 140 yep. newspapers. Yep. Wow. Yep. And it's really, really, really sad, which is going on. Yes. Um, you know, people need to wake up. I, I, I. You know, I. You know, what can one person do? Good people said that. What can one person do? And I know, Jeff, I know you've said that a million times because I know we all have followed you for a long time, and I'm sure you just get so this, you know, you just like go, oh, my gosh. Well, I, I really think that, you know, one person can make a difference. Yep. That, that's yep. why, to me, every single person that we wake up, you don't know what their ripple effect might be in the world in the next five to ten years. Well, so I've got two Russian friends now, and they're talking about Soros and uh, Rothschild. Yeah. I have, yes. I, you know what? It's so funny because I told Jeff that, you know, I made a friend with Russia, and he just kind of go cast, you know. Right. But listen, they, they know what's going on. They, I've, I've been yeah. reading all their posts, and, and so then all of a sudden last week I got another one, and actually, he's Finnish, lives in Moscow, and I'm half Swedish and Danish. My parents came from Sweden. I'm first-born generation, so I've got a little history, too. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's pretty cool, and he's sending some good information. Yeah. So I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, re- so now on Russian news, I have it on my, um, Rus- I get Russian news, really good. It's the Russian Times News. And you know what? I almost believe it way more than what I'm getting here in the United States. 
sorry to say. Well, yeah, you're gonna, but be careful with Russian news. I was going to well, say because they've been infiltrated with the Agenda 21 stuff too. Yeah, and you're going to get a little propaganda out of any state-owned media. But they do, yeah. they do expose a lot. Yeah. yeah, but then I got two friends that send me stuff that um, love Americans. Let me tell you what you get oh, out. Yeah. Of, what you let me yeah. tell you what you get out of state-owned media. They'd be very good at exposing everybody else's dirty laundry except their own. So, and we're not doing any different, Jeff. Who's cleaned right, all right, the wars? Right. So probably out of RT, you're probably <clears throat> you're probably getting some pretty accurate stuff going on around the world. Mm -hmm. um, anything in Russia, though, I would look at it with a with a skewed sense of reality because you know mm -hmm. you know they're no, I, I they're not a always a bit of respect for Mr. Putin, oh, which I, is. Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't Putin say that, too. but I'm just saying when you're talking about state-owned media, government-owned media, right, you have right. to look at it with a skeptical eye. You do. Period. Yep. And actually, you know, people used to say that it was a communist country, and they're. Um, let me tell you something. These people put whatever they want up. I'm. They're. When I see what I, I'm seeing babies blown up in Ukraine. I'm watching babies blown up in Ukraine. You couldn't post that here in the United States. Yeah. You could not do it. All they right. wouldn't because you had okay, a go ahead. You had a comment, Vaughn? You were trying to get in? Well, I'm well that comment what she just made there is hard to follow. That that is terrible, Kathy, and it's heartbreaking. That's that's what we we as as humans have to stop this all happening. Uh, Jeff, did you get a chance to call? You said something about you were going to call that phone number at the bottom of the uh, page. No, no, I hadn't had a chance to do that. But, you know, uh, the little off of what Kathy just said, um, I don't know if you guys, you know, I played some of that interview last night with uh, the, when I was on Caravan to Midnight, and John Wells was talking about the <coughs> same thing. There's a picture that he saw that came out of Ukraine that has haunted him ever since he saw it and it's a woman a young woman it looked like they just tried to gut her and he said she's just staring at the camera she's dead but looking at the camera like you know help me you know this is what happened to me and he said it just stuck with him you know so there are a lot of civilian deaths and stuff that have happened there that um you know have not really been brought out you know to to western media you know and that's Ukraine policy. It has nothing to do with Russia. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I've got contacts that send me um, actual pictures and stuff. Yeah. And um, it, it's the, it's not the Russians doing it to the Ukrainians. No, it is not. Yeah. And um, that's probably why you're not hearing about it all over mainstream media because um, the alternative media has done such a good job in the last couple of years of outnumbering mainstream media as far as numbers so the truth gets out there um and uh with that said they know that if they run with a story on it the the alternative media is going to dig up the facts and what's going to happen is they're going to be debunked and once again proven liars and um I don't know if you've noticed this, but, but they've started having some really bad problems with failing with their numbers um, in the last two years. The mainstream media is not really mainstream media. We are, the alternative media is the mainstream media. Right. right. We really are. Oh, yeah. And I'd like to add uh, this. People don't, I'm sorry, Lori. No, you're people fine. I'm, I'm done. People do not realize when a Marine is on the field. He is the devil dog. He is yep, the yep. angel of death. Yep. We will kill anything, everything in front of us. Yep. Does yep. people not realize what is going on? And they've taken it to another level. I mean, we've got snipers that have sniped anything. Okay? Yep. They will kill unmercifully. Right. And yet you want these young men that have come back, they want to train with us. I know what they are. I know in my heart what they are. And I, I pray for them every day. Yes, and I, you know, I love my Marines, but I do not want my Marines bulldogging the citizens. 
And that's but, Vaughn, right. they come from good moms and dads, and a lot of them have a good heart and soul, and they think they're doing the right thing. So when they come back, we need to help them. We need to help them. Yeah, we need to make – it's just like American Sniper. Look what he went through. Look what he did. He was – you know, it's war. But we shouldn't be going to these wars, number one. We have no reason to go to war. This is all crazy stuff. You know what? You know You know what? Look, look, look at the money. Follow the money. Look where this goes through. This all has to do with the Federal Reserve and, you know, all these evil, evil, evil people that are up there running our banking system. And they're doing it and... They're running and they're pulling the controls on this country. We have no control of this country anymore. Kathy, we, you, you said it all right there. Why are we showing the world that we want to be a military country? Why? We don't need to be. Well, we're doing it. And if we allow this activity to go on, you don't think the world... We're doing it because of an evil banking cabal that is running this country. If you really pay attention and read, we are run by money. Mm -hmm. That's why it's happening, Vaughn. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm getting a little passionate. No, you're absolutely right, Kathy. You're absolutely right. That's what Lori and and, and myself and, and Jeff now and yourself, we all have to get this message out. Somehow. Absolutely. That we, yes, Lori, that we do not, we do, we're not accepting this as American people and, and a moral country. You need to stop. And that's what I put on Joe Miller's site <coughs> yesterday. And I got four comments when I got home, and they acted like I was lunatics. So what I did is, um, Jeff, I sent it to you, Crimea for dummies. Yeah. Um, I just copied, pasted, and put it on. You know what? You stupid idiot people watch this. You know, watch what's going on. They don't, they don't even know. Nobody. You know, what? it's really sad that our country, our the citizens of this country don't really know what's going on. And, you know, I, I know I was awakened like 10, 12 years ago, and I was awakened long before that because I have a Swedish and a Danish parents that left um, their country, their communist countries. My mom so, always told me, Kathy, Sweden is 2%, you know, a socialism is 2% under communism. Don't forget that. So all these other countries in this world are ruled. They're being told. And you know what? It's here. It's, it's here in America now. It makes me really sad. We're turned into a socialized country. We're being told what we can do and not do, what we can eat, not drink. Um... Yeah, but that's, know, they're, they're never going to take us un- over as long as we've got Kathy Corris. As, as long as we got Kathy's underground hair salon. Uh-uh. I hope not, Jeff. <laughs> she indoctrinates them as they get their hair cut. I know, and that's why I love you so, so much, because I can, like, get my little breath out of... I mean, Lori, you don't listen to me. I listened to everything you had to say. I could not agree more. You are a smart woman and first in the first three sentence you wrote i i wrote on chat she's smart i could tell oh thank uh, you <laughs> well you know what a smart person knows a smart person and that's how it works jeff knows how that was, and then everybody that comes on this show knows mm-hmm. um that's, that's it. how it works you know we just got to pull together and not be afraid not yeah. let you know and that's one thing I just gave up. I'm not afraid of anybody anymore. And I've told Jeff that before several times. I, I, I'm I, not afraid. You know, what, what are you going to do? Come and get me? That's Come it. and get me. That's it. Well, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me because um, I'm not like the biggest person in the world. I'm pretty short. <laughs> and, um, and with the stuff that I expose, um, I've uh, had several individuals ask me, um, how are you not afraid? Because so many people are afraid to speak out and this, that, and the other. And you know what I tell them? Because I know who my daddy is, and he's the king. Yeah. Amen. There you go. 
And, and you know, and you know, uh, my wife and I had this discussion a year ago when I decided to go on the air on whether or not to go out there and be doing this using my real name. And mm-hmm. I decided, yes, I want to do that because you know people are going to take you as more legitimate if you're if they know exactly right. who you are, you know. So, right. um, so I kind of have the same thing. You know, there's a God in heaven that is, you know, um, got the master plan. And I know that, you know, he'll look after all of us. So, Well, not only that, Bible says he didn't instill in us the spirit of fear. That's right. That's right. That's exactly that's right. That's not of God. So I'm, out, I'm out here and, and using my real name. And I'm not knocking anybody that's in our social stream that goes, you know, by names and stuff. Because, you know, there's a lot of weirdos out on the Internet. But um, I have said before on this show, it's funny, if I try and tell somebody about this show that's never been here before, um, you know, you're trying to tell them something. It's like, yeah, we were having a deep conversation last night with Boo Boo and Fuzzy Pants on the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, interesting. Right. Yeah, right. you, you, right. you, you need to have some humor. If you don't Jeff, have some humor, got to have it. That's right. you you got to remember, Jeff, the funny thing is, uh, you remember 50, almost 50 years ago, I was in Vietnam. Uh, back during that period of time, that's the way we communicated a lot of times on, on the, uh, the, the, uh, the radios yeah. that we talked live on the air. I, I went by KN, KN 6414. I ran an old tram. I ran uh, React 9 Rescue, okay? When people were stranded or hurt or injured, they'd call me, and then I'd call and dispatch the police department in the 60s. So, you know, we may be funny names, but we were pretty serious. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. My it's, brother it's, is in Vietnam. And we have part. a new uh, we have a new person who's joined the call. Uh, we've got Chris uh, Uncertain. Uh, have you got a question for our guest, Lori? Well, yeah, I'm a liberal. I always have questions. <laughs> you're you're not a liberal. It's With that funny. hat on, yeah. you better be a liberal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I brought this up last night, and it wouldn't be fair because yeah. your name was brought up. Yeah. That if you were on a guest, that this question should be asked of you. Who are you so, talking? Okay, to me. Yes, okay, so I'll, I'll ask you two questions. Okay. And <laughs> go on. Go on. You, we already okay. had it out last night, so let, let her answer it, the question. So the questions are for Lori. That's what he's trying to tell you, Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, the, and the, I was on the phone, and I was tired, and. I know. I'm, I'm, so. I'm, I'm. I'm just, and two I'm, bulls I'm, have I'm, no business trying to settle an argument. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I will so, do the best that I can, Chris. Go ahead. These, these, <laughs> questions, these questions, or these questions, these statements have come up that uh, uh, Jade Helm 15 violates posse comitatus and is unconstitutional. Um, in the spirit of co- posse comitatus, where does it? Uh, where is where is the violation there? Because posse comitatus is, under the Insurrection Act, I read I read the de- or read read what cost posse comitatus says last night involves police actions against the U.S. people or mm-hmm. on the upon the U.S. people within mm-hmm. the borders of the United States or its territories. Mm-hmm. Now, posse comitatus also only applies to the Army and the Navy. Mm-hmm. Anything else is only prohibited a police action would only be prohibited outside of the army and the navy um is only prohibited by a basically a general order from the pentagon which can be repealed at any time Mm -hmm. so if if we had uh uh somewhere in middle america uh a, a, a scenario where this there's a problem and the local police can't handle it state police can't handle it um federal law enforcement can't handle it technically they could say okay this general order from the pentagon no longer applies to this branch and this branch go in and handle it that's what national Le- no well even uh even um uh it, it posse comitatus doesn't apply to every single branch it's, it's limited actually right, but- Okay, now on that comment, before you finish, just so that I can interject something here on that comment, okay? Yes, it is, but the Constitution also limits to only a Navy. Did you know that? 
I'm sorry, I might, my Skype cut. The Constitution what? limits us to only a Navy. The rest is supposed to be a militia. So, are you going to go by that from, from what was that, 18? Oh, I don't remember the exact date right off the top of my head. But, you know, I understand what you're saying by it limits to certain branches. Well, the Constitution actually limits us to having a Navy. We're not so, supposed to have standing army. We're not supposed to have Marines. We're not supposed, well, Marines could be considered part of the Navy because they, are they actually Navy. are. Those guys, but, those guys just swab the deck. We take care of it. Well, no, I know. I know what you do, darling. I know. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying. You're not supposed to have um, Air Force and, and all this other stuff. Constitutionally. Constitutionally, you're only supposed to have the Navy, which is supposed to protect us from seaward invasions. Okay, so if you're going to go back to the historical reference of it, on as far as only, what did you say, only the Army and and who? The, the Army and the Navy are specifically listed. Right, but when was that? Was that in the 1800s? When it, it was from uh, Posse Comitatus Insurrection Act. I'd have to, I'd, I'd have to go look it up. It like again. around 1856 or something like that? Uh, off the top of my head, I, I don't want to say I'm yes guessing. or no. I'm guessing right now. I don't remember, but I, I think that number keeps coming to my head. Um, okay, so you have to look, was there all these different forces at the time? Second of all, our military, the, the founding fathers did not want a standing military. They did not want a standing army. There's a good reason for it. The British. Rutherford, Rutherford, Rutherford B. Hayes, 1878. There you go, 1878. So we didn't have Air Force then, did we? No. We didn't have Marines at the time, did we? Mm. Yes. When, no. when, were, the, so when, were, the, when were the Marines founded, uh, Vaughn? I'd have to go in there and chase my ring down because that ain't off the top of my head, you know. I've been out of the service, like I say, for probably a lot longer than you've been on the service, son. <laughs> well, the, when the Marines the Marines were founded basically to fight the Barbary pirates, and you know, I oh, no, you know, yep. oh, no, that was the Navy. That was the Muslims over there that were doing the same thing. They were trying it. Well, we won't go there. That's another world altogether. We'll leave them alone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but but we do know two that battalions Marines... of Continental Marines were formed on the tenth of November, seventeen seventy five, in Philadelphia. That's what I was thinking. It's right, right on my. Now, now we also know that the Marines work with the Navy. Okay, they're 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 considered people see them as a different branch, but basically they're not well, they're, an ex they're an extension. Yes. Right. Okay, so this is this is one of the things you have to look at. All right. So but the, here's the thing. We've got our founding fathers. They didn't want a standing army. Why didn't they want a standing army? The standing army of the British had already oppressed them, raped their women, burned their houses. They had just gotten done with a war. Right. Why would they want an army, just like what the British did, to be trained and training their sheriffs or their marshals at that time or their deputies or whatever the case may be if you back it up to those years? Okay, let's go forward. The same thing. We don't want our military training our interagency partners who we know are not going overseas. That is a crock. If it is... Especially all the corrupt ones, we'll give them a one-way ticket. By all means, train them. Hey, Lori. Yes, Kathy Coros. Um, what's the end game for this? Why do we want to do this? Okay. Um, the the thing about the mastering the human domain. Okay. Do you remember Desert Storm? I do remember Desert Storm. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember when the enemy held their hands up, they put their weapons down, and they gave up to our right. guys without right. a fight, without any firing going on? Right. This is the ultimate of mind control. That's part of mastering the human domain, okay? Now, the, who wants to do this, Lori? Who is the mastermind behind this that wants to do all this is what I want to know. Okay, well, so far, because it goes deeper, I just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> but... So far, it does link with CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, 
um, uh, Special Operations Command, of course, UN, NATO. Um, UN, okay. Um, and, and the Federal Reserve. Well, all of those, if, if you realize, you they're know, all owned by the Federal Reserve, so that part right. doesn't. Right, you got the same the same globalist elite are that are behind all of the crud. Right. Um, tend to always be behind all of the other. Can, and so uh, I'm going off of a lead, but I can't speak of it yet because I don't have it um, at 100% where I can prove it yet. So I have to hold off on that one comment I wanted to make. <laughs> well, that's that's fine. I mean, I just wanted you, you're you're smart, Cookie. You know. Well, pencil me in for pencil me in for a question here. Who is this? Well, I'm sorry Chris, because yeah. he he hadn't answered his second. Chris hadn't answered ask his second question. Right. Okay, oh. Chris. I want to ask you this first. Did I answer your first question? Uh, partially Hi. yes. I I I have to I'd have to look further into it. Uh, okay. which which I. I I shot a question, but it it didn't go through for whatever reason. But uh, your this conversation is going back to the banks and the Federal Reserve and the globalists. And I, I have a question on this because it okay. uh, and because it kind of struck me as odd is that Federal Reserve, blah blah blah, globalists, yes, but our currency is fiat. And yes, earlier is. earlier in this conversation with you and Jeff, uh, the the comment was made that. The globalists don't want this. Uh, want to be challenged in court on any of this because you know they're gonna, you know, they're gonna be made, they'll be made to pay. Well, the the payment is financial, and if our and if our our currency is fiat and they're making the currency up, what do they lose? Okay. Okay. Excellent question, and I'm getting ready to answer that one for you. Great, great, great question, actually. Okay. Great question. That was half excellent question, so here we go. First of all, what I was establishing with Jeff and what I was talking about is you have to do a process in order to, in legalese type of thing, which is like take it to court. That is like giving them notice, you're on notice, this is what I'm saying, this is what I'm going to prove. Okay. Um, what this does is it puts them on notice. Do I think that'll do anything? Do I think they're worried about the money that they print up in DC? No, but here's the kicker. All right. If you are in a state that has, um, do I think that'll do anything? Do I think they're worried about the money that they print up in DC? Okay. No. Somebody okay. has their web browser turned up and we're hearing the speakers. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not me. Oh, wow. That is that you, Vaughn? Not me. I'm muted. Hang on a minute. Somebody's got their web browser on. I don't. I'm, I'm silent. Oh, I'm muted. Yeah, I don't know what's going it's on. It's the government. It's coming it's from Chris. Yes. It's that retired policeman over there goofing around. It's coming from Chris's <laughs> system. I don't know why. I, I've got, no, I've got nothing open but you. But but right. you're blinking when it's going on. Is the reason I'm saying that. So. I'll try to answer. Um, first is to get it established in writing in, um, the court. Because this not only draws attention, and what I mean by money, is go after and establish payment in gold or silver. Okay. Yeah, now, we're not backed by gold, so that's why. Right, but they have access to it because you're you're going to want to go after them on, in a civil suit. Right. Right. I know. I've, I've read so much about it for the last two years that I'm like blue in the face. Right. So once you um, go after them in the manner for the civil suit and you specify silver or gold, that fiat's not going to do anything. The main thing is control for them, okay? But in order to get the ball rolling for criminal charges for what they're doing, it needs to be established and they need to be notified, which they already know but they need to be notified so they can't claim ignorance of not knowing. 
in legal terms. Does that make okay, sense? But yeah, but no, it but does. A, a, a criminal violation. Um, after after it's all said and done in court, let let's say somebody does this, right? And they get a and they get a and they win and they win, and there's the the criminal violation carries a penalty monetary the fine gets paid to the state you'd have to go after them civilly that's where you can get your cash payment that's but if what you go I after said. criminally you're not going to get it that's what I said go after them civilly first um, I, I, there was a whole bunch of crap that went back and forth and I couldn't hear half what you said oh, okay sorry. yeah what I said was go after them civilly first okay and what this does and then establish because um, your payment in silver or gold. Right. Okay. So that's why John F. Kennedy died because he tried yes, it is. to turn our monetary system back to the U.S. Treasury backed by gold. So, in certain, who owns the uh, Federal Reserve, sir? Can you explain that to me? It's a private banking. The, yeah, the and who. And wait, 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 wait. A lot more than one owner. Yeah, I know, I know that, Lori. But um, and certain who who owns it? It, it, it is not the federal government. And can you tell me who started it and owned it? I just said That's private true. banking okay. banking firms. You're not. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck, Kathy. I've okay. been listening to the okay. show for a year, and and prior to that, I've known that it, okay. it's never well, been a that's, federal. Well, that's it's not a federal it, entity. No, it is it's not. not it's, a federal it entity. started it's, out with nine families. It was corrupt. Well, Federal it, Reserve it, was a misnomer, and it was used in that context when when uh, the Federal Reserve Act came about is because it gives people a false air of it's a federal agency, and a lot of people still believe it. No, it's, it's not. Federal, it's it was, Federal Reserve. It's a federal agency. It's got to be. If you it, ask it, anybody no, no, no. It started court. by nine families, 1913. It was right. like. Yes, he's yeah. agreeing. He's telling you that, yes, they okay. used that name okay. because it made it sound like it was a federal government. Right, bank. right, right. Because I've asked like like 100 people. I've had like four no out of 100 people. I, oh, wow. I, I, I know. Isn't that scary? I'm sitting there doing there, and I'll say, who owns the federal reserve? The federal government. I said, no, it's the private well, and, and And that would be a good a good segment for, I don't know, Mark Dice, uh, Waters World to go out there and say, who owns the Federal Reserve? Yeah, and it would be. Get a good gauge of Ooh. who actually believes this crap. But Ooh, Mark Dice? Who's Mark Dice? Oh, my Lord, you need to see his videos. Let me tell you. Yeah, you're going to have to go look that oh, up on YouTube there. I know who he I'll is. I'll tell no. you what, I cried, not laughing, though. I cried when he did the one about the internment camps. Yeah. Did y'all see that? I did not. Everybody but one person signed that petition. Yeah, but all he's been doing lately is stuff to do with actors and stuff. What has he done, Hollywood on us? And oh, I don't him... know. I haven't seen him lately. I've only seen the ones that, um, that had Wasn't... to do with the Bill of Rights and and, wasn't uh, Mark? Wasn't uh, and I could be wrong on this, but wasn't Mark Dice the one that went out and asked for petitions for Karl Marx for, uh, for, to run for president? Yeah, he. It was he, It was either him or um, it was either him or and they and people wrote down their name and their birthday and they signed. Roger, <laughs> <it. laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that sounds like Mark Dice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but my... I mean, the sad thing is they signed it. Oh yeah. Yeah. My my friend my friend put up a video tonight, uh, and I I put it up on my page. Uh, Justin Justin Walu is that it? it? Let me say this right. Justin Wu Li. Okay, Lee. he called the, yeah. yeah he called the FBI, and <laughs> he cracks me up. I love him. He is such he 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 is him. Okay, and when he speaks and does things, you got to pay attention because. That is what it's all about, you know, and we need more characters like him. I don't know about people chasing Hollywood. If I had some of these clientele, I'd be dead in this 100% like I'm trying to do. But these guys, you know, they just blow it off because, you know what? 
They think this is just going to go away here real soon. And people are going to forget about it. You know, it's going to happen and nothing's going to happen. Well, if America keeps that attitude, we're in a world of trouble. And I'm just telling you, like I told before, and I'm not going to get excited here, Chris. I'm not going to go bull on you. I'm just going to tell you, we've got to tell America, let them know that we've got to say no to this. I don't care how. Yeah, they- it's not okay. No, it's, it's hey, Vaughn, right. it's no fun if you don't go, rah, 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 and then go, meow. <laughs> I don't like any really government. <laughs> I don't like rah, 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 any rah, rah, government. Rah, rah. Any, 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 I don't like any government that has three-letter words, TSA, NSA, anything that's three letters yeah, has yeah, become it makes totally me, evil. It makes me think of evil. a lot of four-letter words. Exactly. So, so you, we, so we do need four. You know what, Rick, uh, Jeff, you're absolutely right. We need four-letter words. Yeah. Right. Or, uh, okay. uh, right. 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 Five I letters. Can't, I can't spell. <laughs> so, so basically, what you're saying is, 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 is you're okay with FEMA because they're a four-letter agency. Yeah. I know. No, we don't need that either. That's crazy. <laughs> But, you know, when you sit and look at all these agencies, they're all three-letter words, and that's freaking crazy. Yeah. I mean, we've got – we are so overregulated. It, when I sit – I mean, <laughs> not not the average person does what I do, but, you know, you start reading this stuff, and you're, like, going, are you freaking kidding me? And then you try to, like, inhale it and understand it, and you're, like, going, huh? Are you serious? That's where I always is. USA is becoming a bad word, as far as I'm concerned. I and mean, if anyone wants to get ahead of the ball game, study UN Agenda 21. It's the blueprint. Yeah. Seriously, yep. it is the blueprint, and I mean with everything, it is the blueprint. It's very easy once you read that to. Um, you have to pick things out pretty pretty quickly on that end. So, well, Lori, yeah. I was thinking, Lori, you know, it's getting pretty nice. They're going to pull this in July. Maybe I'll just get some of my friends. We'll get our Harleys and let's go down there with our uh, with our uh, M16s, uh, AR15s, and uh, whatever we decide to carry. Because yeah. you're allowed to carry your long rifle in America, Second Amendment. Right. And we'll watch the boys play in a sandbox. Well, well you know what I thought would be cool. Yes. How about the Patriot Guard or uh, um, the ones of Rolling Thunder? Yeah, the yeah. Rolling Thunder. Yeah. Let's the come Biker. support. Let Let's support and watch the drill and video the drill mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. make sure to get great pictures of them learning their educational process. Yeah. Right. I could get the Hell's Angels. I That's could get the renegade. Oh, no. oh, oh Lord! Oh, no, the Hell's so Angels are actually Lord, really, really, really good. They're all doctors, well, lawyers, and they're going to text them have a party. They're going to have a party. Let's I know a... very much about the um, bikers. Well, yeah. Lone Star beer is pretty good that pretty time of the year. I might even break from being not drinking for years and have a beer with the boys. You know, this... back in the '60s, the Hell's Angels, everybody feared them. They were like death. Right? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I can remember I was driving to see my boyfriend in Sacramento, and I stopped in this place like in Fresno, and there were all these hell's angels. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh my god, I can't stop here. And I had to pee so bad okay. and get gas, <laughs> and I just said, okay, oh, I'm gonna drive a little bit further. But hell's angels are good They're... people. Well, yeah, they are. I was. I was just... They're you total patriots. Yeah, they, you could have peed right there by their bikes, and they wouldn't have. I know, it. I know, I know. But I was just young. I was very young. I was like 18 back then. I'm 60 oh, now. Okay. okay. So think about that. So it just scared me. All those bikers there. I was just oh, like, no. oh bikers my god. Don't goodness. scare me a bit. Don't scare no, me a bit. No, no, they don't mean now, but they did way back then because you know the skull and the crossbone and uh, you know they were just like. Yeah, I was young. I was like a young kid. Kathy, I did a video on that, and and it was about the one percenters. And I said, you people out here are so scared of the one percenters, but do you realize one percent of this nation is controlling the whole world and messing us up, and you guys are calling us bad? 
Yet you let them get away with killing 50 million children a year by abortion and yep. taking that and using it for experiments and everything else. That is insane. Yep. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. And, and who's caused all the wars in the last, you know, 20 years, Americans, Amer America? <laughs> it certainly was not the bikers, let me no. tell you. No, I, I love my bikers too now, guys. Don't get me wrong. That's what I was thinking. You know, that would be pretty interesting to have, uh, oh, have yeah. the bikers roll mm -hmm. up Absolutely. there and visit. Absolutely. Have yeah. our flags flying on the back of the bikes. And I'd ride, I would ride in the back. That's right. Oh, I think it'd be great. I think it would be great. I mean, because here, here's the scenario. We know, and, and the group I'm talking about are, have gotten a little younger, you know. We yeah. think we're younger. <laughs> I'm 66, think I'm 18, and, and you know the reality of it is, I would watch some. I love to watch some young men do their exercise in the military, and if they did it wrong, I'd tell them, "I'm Let's sorry, see. man, you need to do this right. Give me 20 right now, and take a run and lap a couple times, and come back and see if you get that performance right." Now, wouldn't that be the right way to handle this, Lori? That that's an idea. That uh, Operation really an bike, idea. Operation bike helmet, 15. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you know what's even funnier? Maybe Washington is afraid of the bikers like I was when oh, I was a young you. kid. Yeah. Washington doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, because the bikers are true pa patriots, and they love okay. America, and they want their freedom. Yeah, they, they want to, um, you know, they're I, – I, I love the whole uh, – my, my gosh – well, you know, in those years when I was stage manager for the Atlanta Rhythm Section, they used to follow us quite a bit, and they they came to all the outdoor concerts, and uh, those guys were cool, and uh, oh yeah, they uh, they looked out for you, so yeah, yeah, and they'll give you the shirt off your back. Absolutely, you good guys, well. all of them, good guys. And I could tell you why there's so much corruption within the system, and then I'm not going to get into their politics, but we know why. Because it was easy money, and who made it easy? The corrupt government, oh, yeah. the oh, yeah. CIA, and everybody else. We know the story. That's why, you know, when you think of this, we really need to do this. We need to really make a showing to these people in some manner or form that, you know what? You don't bother us. We're not scared of you. In fact, we think you guys are pretty funny. And do you realize we're not talking about you standing there doing your little performance? We're talking about the guys that are behind this action. And that would put a real damp to their whole thing, you know, damper it, you know, uh, kind of tone it down. You know, that is, that is really an idea. We'll have to throw that around. Yeah, when the when the Jade Helm guys ask them what they're doing, say, we're studying you to see what you guys are going to do when we show up. Yeah. <laughs> and we're supporting so, our troops so we know in the future. for their rights. Yeah, we're getting our data on points. On American soil. Yeah, we're getting our yeah. data points together, so we know how you guys are going to react when we show up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Let let let's see one of those Jade Helm guys come up to some farmer that has lived there forever, farming his land. He'll freaking have a shotgun and blow his head off. Right. I hope not. I really, I really, really. Well, I. You know what? I don't think he would. But if this guy was like coming up to him and causing it. He has every right to um, protect his uh, land and property. Well, and I think Vaughn's right. I think yeah, it's I think it's trying. a big, wide open thing. There's there's so yep. many possibilities for bad things to happen. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and that's oh. what we're about. You know, uh, we do just like us, the military have put our lives on the line for us. Our military have protected us, and you know what? By us standing and doing what we're doing right here, I'm doing the same thing for them right now. Right. That's right. You know what, Lori? I was reading something on um, one of my sites because I'm on a couple of keyboard warriors, and and they talk about the militia and um, the Oath Keepers, and a lot of them are ex-military. And Jeff is a a um, George a, Oath Keeper. I'm an Oath Keeper. Yep. Oath, Oath Keeper, yep. and I think that we got a lot of citizens that really care about this country that will protect our country oh, yeah. if if we are being um you know it's really sad to see that our government is doing what they're doing by this exercise because i think that 
there's a lot of good and actually the states that they're in well california i don't care about but the rest i'm kind of like going are you serious you're going to go into all these states and then i i heard it was nine now it's uh, 11 right it started out it was it was it was uh seven and then it went to nine nine okay so it went over to florida so jeff you know get your gun out yeah i have a funny feeling it's going to end up and be a whole lot more states by the time july right. rolls around well see the thing is and and here's the thing right now even though we see on that sheet of paper jade helm starts july 15th jade helm has already started the right. psychological part of it is already started they are already yeah. collecting data who is getting in contact with who? What movements are we making? How are we going to counter this? What are we oh, going to yeah. do? Jade Helm has already started. Yep, and, and how we handle still... ourselves and defeat it is going to be what yeah, we need to work on. Yeah. Right. I've been throwing fuel to it. Laura, you have. Jeff's show has now. Anybody that's speaking out. Okay, that's that's exactly what they're looking for. Right. And let me go on record right now. I love the military. Yeah. I do not disrespect anybody in uniform. I don't care if he's a police officer, a fireman, or whatever. But if you're going to act rogue or you're going to follow command by a rogue officer and do something that you know morally is not right by communicating and, and, and scaring citizens in this country, that's not morally right. right. Okay. But I still respect you, man. Trust me, I do. And, and I always will. I always, I always, I'd have your back anywhere. But we have to realize this is a time that this, we can't let this continue because it's only going to progress into a deeper level of consciousness for these sick people mm -hmm. yeah, to the absolutely. further us. Okay? Do, do, I, do you have wars on our sovereign nation and our sovereign country by our own people? That's what scares the crap out of me. Well, you're you're talking you're talking military commanding and telling our own sovereign people that live here to do what they're gonna say. Now if this happens, oh boy. Oh boy. That's a get the blow dryer for them. Well, Kathy, we'll have you down there with your blow dryer so you can uh, cool them off. Yeah, shut yeah. up. And <laughs> hey, give them a haircut. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, if we could get them in her haircut chair for a few minutes, she could, you know, convert them all over, you know. You know what? I, I'm passionate about this. Don't make fun of me. It's oh, no, not it's, I'm not making fun. Oh, Kathy, yeah, no. you all are. You're you know, I'm just a hairdresser, but I'm a smart hairdresser. Well, the funniest no thing dummy. you said on here one day about that is you run a couple of them off. <laughs> I have. I, I have. I can see him going I've to the car, and you're chasing him to the car. Well, no, no, look up at the chemtrails. <laughs> right? Kathy, you have to learn so one thing. There's one thing a Marine will not do is disrespect a woman. And yeah. that's what I know. I do know we have all this military, and they're going to take care of we the people, yeah. not the government. And hey. so that's where my hope goes to, that, you know, I'm – See, you guys get me so scared because I've listened to this show and I get freaked out because all of a sudden we're like hearing all this conspiracy theory stuff. I'm like, oh, no way. Our, our people are going to take care of our, our people. And I actually know it will, it is going to happen, but I'm like, you guys are scaring everybody. Quit doing it. I mean, you know what? I would love the government to come and attack America. Come and attack us. We'll just come and, I hate. I'm armed and ready. <laughs> I am dead ass armed and there ready. You go. There you go. And I know how to shoot, and I'm a great shot, and I got tons of guns. I got plenty of ammo. There you go. <laughs> and yeah. come and get me, because I'm going to shoot first. <laughs> if somebody comes in here, I've already had that happen, like, like I don't know, 15 years ago. I, my kids were here, and somebody ran around. There was a policeman showed up, knocked on my door at 3.30 in the morning, woke me up. And I looked at him, I said, what are you doing here? With this lady across the street. Well, somebody came and knocked on the door, and I just said, you know what? It's 3 in the morning, and these are kids. Just go away. And she just, like, harped on, harped on. And I told the policeman, I said, do you have a warrant 
And he said, no, ma'am, I don't. I said, go away. Go <laughs> away. Oh, there you go. Good for you. <laughs> and that go. was like, that was, you know, I, I was so upset. I had to put my robe on and like 3 a.m. in the morning. I just said, go away. And he did. He went away. Yeah. <laughs> he knew better, didn't he, Kathy? <laughs> yep. It's just people being able to, um, for some reason, God and my parents, you know, let me learn to speak out and, like, do some of these good things. I'm a very, very, very good person. I'm a very giving person. I do a lot for the needy and the poor. I am not a taker by no means. I'm a giver. And I would give the back of my shirt. And Jeff knows that, right, Jeff? Absolutely. That's right. Bless you, Kathy. We love you. You know that, Kathy. We're not making Well, I don't want any, I don't want any, um, I just want to let you guys know that there's right and there's wrong, and this is why this show is on. And now we you know, are, and now Jennifer, um, I mean, uh, uh, Lori. Lori knows for sure now how you get sucked into a four-hour broadcast on American Liberty Long. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Is and it, you know what? She's really good. This is what I, happens. I, I, I knew it within the first few seconds. You get on here Mark. for an interview, and you wake up, and it's next Thursday, and you think, what happened? Yeah, it's getting late, <laughs> It's too. next Thursday. How did it happen? Yeah, and I, I got to work. I, gotta, I, I, I worked all day yesterday, all day today. I didn't get home till late. And tomorrow I'm working um, huge. It's right before Easter, so everybody wants. Everything done. Yeah, so you'll be, be you'll be cutting a jagged trail through people's hair in the morning. No, I'll be fine, Jeff. I'm fine. <laughs> right. I'll be right. fine. I'm a good girl. But anyhow, Lori, you know what? I I am very honored to talk to you and speak to you tonight, and I appreciate the work that you're doing um, for America. So that's it. Thank you, dear. It's it's me who's had the honor to meet all of y'all. And um, I thank you for that. And, you know, it's spreading the word and getting the word out there. That, that's the only way we can stop I know. what's going on. I know. And it's hard. And you, you do a good job at doing it, Lori. You do a good job. You're, you're simple at it. You don't make it confusing. You make people aware. And that's what I like. Because so many people come on. Uh oh, I think Kathy's breaking She's up. She's breaking there. up. I can't yeah. hear. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was gonna, I was gonna tell Kathy something cute, you know, because she's in Georgia and I'm from Georgia, mm-hmm. and we use y'all. And there was a comedian for years, a very thoughtful man named Louis Grizzard. He could be very serious too, and right. he would ask the question, "What's the plural of y'all?" All y'all, and you used it just a minute ago. I'm, it was nice to meet all y'all. I hadn't heard that in a while because you know I grew up in Georgia and I hadn't heard it in a while. But right. um, that is the official Southern plural of y'all. All y'all. Yeah. All y'all. It That's sounds right. like us down. My my daddy and grandpa were from Hazard, Kentucky. I was born in Tennessee. My mom was born in Tennessee, and uh, it, it, it's it's a funny world because. When you put a whole bunch of Southern people together, and uh, I've been around a whole bunch, so, you know, my, I don't have that accent, but, you know, I can remember a time when I didn't have no shoes because I didn't wear no shoes, and I'd never seen a snowflake in my life, and, and, and I, I, I think I've told that story, and it's a wonderful thing, isn't it, Jeff? Yeah, and it, it's funny. you got to understand this. Um, um, Lori, the first time I saw a video from Vaughn, his, he posted something on uh, this site that I have, ZekeleyTV.com, and uh-huh. and he was, this was like, I don't know, three months ago, and man, it looked like he was in North Dakota. Everything was like covered in snow, and he's walking around, you know, like there's nobody's business, like it's not cold, and it looked like, it looked like he was on a glacier, you know, <laughs> and I'm down oh, here. Were you in, in Kentucky? I don't know yeah. where where were it was in Kentucky and then, you know uh-huh. and I'm down here in Florida yeah. and it's you know 75 degrees and I'm watching that video thinking where is he at Canada North Dakota where is that No that was in Muncie Indiana Lori yeah. Muncie Indiana. Oh Muncie yeah. okay yeah, yeah I'm familiar all with Muncie state, too all state area Yeah I'm familiar with Hazard as well Yeah <laughs> Hazard. 
Bless your heart. Yeah. I, knew, I knew I liked you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 With that whole area out there. All right, so uh, Chris is still on here, and we're we're like we've got a few minutes, a couple minutes left here before it's time to roll this thing out of here. Um, did you did your questions did your questions get answered that you were asking that you wanted to ask? Well, there was the uh, the second half, and it kind of went by the wayside about it uh, being unconstitutional. But I think somewhere in uh, Article One, Section Eight, how they're getting around it is that. Uh, uh, Raising support armories appropriations can't be more than two years, but they're doing it every year. Right. Right. They're they're only supposed to have it for two years, but they're also limited to ten miles square in Article One, Section Eight, dear. Yeah. Except for in Fort. Uh oh. So, so uh, they're limited to ten miles square, so they can't. If I'm understanding you properly, they can't. Uh, raise money, keep an army by appropriating it by a year at a time because they're limited to 10 miles square so that their constitutional obligation to protect the United States from enemies foreign and domestic and all the other kind of happy horse crap they're, they're violating the constitution really? Okay, let me pull up article 1 section 8 so I can get to the clause so I can read it word for word okay? Okay. Yeah. Because I don't like. And by the and by the way, for the record, Chris doesn't like what's going on with Jade Helm either. He just wanted to get the factual on this because it's yeah. an it's an interesting conversation. Like, what is the absolute truth about the constitutionality of it all? Right. He wants to know when it's up or not. Yeah. Yeah. Be right. cool. To, yeah. Be cool. And okay. it's it's just a good conversation. This isn't like he's defending it or something. So. No. No. I don't take it that way. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure you knew that. He <clears throat> he brings this stuff on the air like he's done over the last year just to make mm -hmm. everybody think, and it makes us better because we, we really will dig in and we'll come out with the right answer here. Right. Okay. Give me one second. And I am in Article 1, Section 8, by the way. Um, clause, clause, clause 11 or 12, if memory serves. I'm looking. <laughs> Great show, huh? Forgot the eye. That was funny, wasn't it? Nah, poor, <laughs> man, poor Kathy, something I can turn a thing. She don't think we was making fun of her, does she? No. Okay. Let's go to 13. Let's start. All right. No, let's back up. Let's go to 12. Starting with 12. Okay. To provide and maintain a Navy. To make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. To provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections and repel invasions. That's the militia that is allowed to be on the land forces. Isn't that interesting? To provide for organizing arming and disciplining the militia militia wow and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the united states the ones who are employed in the service of the reserving united to states. the states respectively the appointment yeah. of the officers and the authority of training the right. militia according to the discipline prescribed by congress wow. the US army is not militia special uh, Special Operations Command is not militia. Okay, so to exercise, here we go. I'm going to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such districts not exceeding 10 miles square, as may by secession of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of that of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts magazines arsenals dockyards and other needful buildings bases there you go to make all laws such 
to make all laws shall be necessary and proper for carrying into the execution the foregoing powers and all other powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or officer thereof. See, I remember that, Chris, because, see, I was there when they wrote that. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't back in my head. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> now, I'm going to share something else with you. That's very, very interesting, uh, Chris. Okay. Yeah. If you are near your computer, go to your search engine and type in 4 U.S. Code 72. Or U.S. Code 72. Yep, and you're going to pull it up under Law Cornell. You, Laura, you so smart, Lawrence. <laughs> you, you, you know what? You got a good memory. You're smart. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm going to read this. All offices. Remember that DHS, HH, uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, and all that good little stuff we were talking about earlier, yeah, sweetheart? Yeah. There you go. All offices attached to the seat of government shall be exercised in the District of Columbia and not elsewhere, there except you. as otherwise expressly provided by law. Why is it District of Columbia? There is your 10-mile square. Your 10-mile square is the District of Columbia. It is the of the United States. Wow, that They're means... They're not allowed out of D.C., and they know it. That means all those fusion centers are unconstitutional. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Unless they're expressly provided, otherwise provided by law. Right. But well, laws... Well, it has to be in adherence with the Constitution, though. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And in order for it to be... You'd have to have an amendment to, to the Constitution. Or an erect... Uh, or for um, you'd have to amend the Constitution to allow them to go outside of that ten by ten. Exactly. She's absolutely right, Chris. Yep, she is. And Lori, when was um, wow the district District of Columbia became? It, I I know when it was, but I can't remember. Um, district. Columbia became its own entity like in it, it changed like in 19 the early 1900s right or 1912 whatever are you talking about when did it become a corporation right right it was eight 1930s or or Ziggly I do not remember the exact date. Right. So I don't want to speak and say something that is inaccurate. Yeah, but I do know it became, uh, it had a lot to do with Wood, Woodrow Wilson, I believe. Chris, thank you, Lori. Huh? I, did, I didn't hear. I heard oh, somebody. she didn't hear you. 1871. 1871? Yeah, that would have also, uh, what act does that go with? That's the act of, um, isn't that uh, Trading with the Enemies Act? Let's see. Uh, the Residence Act was signed on July 16th, 1790, approved the creation of a capital district along the Potomac. Uh, the states of Maryland and Virginia donated land to form the federal district, which included the pre existing settlements of Georgetown and Alexandria. Uh, in 1791 to serve as the new national capital. In 1846, Congress returned the land originally ceded by Virginia 
1871, it created a single municipal government for the remaining portion. Right. right. Okay. Right. Now, type in your computer's 28 U.S. code 3002. When you pull it up, go to 15 A, B, and C, and then next time dare them to tell you that the United States is not a corporation. Is not a corporation? I said next time, after you read this, dare them to tell you that it is not right. a okay. corporation. Okay, hang on. What am I looking up here? Because I had to fix the source. 28, the number 28. All right. U.S. Code. She's smart as a whip. Yep. 3002. Okay. And then you're going to scroll down to 15 A, B, and C. I'm losing all connectivity. Okay. <coughs> wow. The United States means A, a federal corporation, B, an agency, department, commission, board, or any other entity of the United States, or an instrumentality of the United States. Right. Now go back to Article 1, Section 8, and reread that. Because United States is different than the United States of America. Right. Yeah, I, I have heard that before. Yeah, it's a patent name the government uses for their corporation. Right. right. And right. this is why many people don't understand how come our natural rights keep getting trumped and all of this good little stuff. Because these, there is a corporate constitution. That corporate constitution might as well be, I'll give an example, might as well be an example of bylaws of Walmart. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah. Same people. It pretty I've much seen. shadowed <laughs> the organic. Yeah. But it made your right <laughs> into privileges. I'm sorry. Thank you. Lori, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at you for laughing because... You're fine to laugh. It's a good thing to laugh here. Yeah, it is a good thing to laugh because it's so true. I, 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 I kind of knew, knew a lot of this, but you just pulled it right up. Spitfire. Wow, I'm very impressed. And that's it. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, huge. I've, I've got documents that would probably. Um, I'm sure you do. Your mouth drop. <laughs> yeah. That's but cool. one thing at a time, one step at a time. Let's get Jade Helm taken care of, everybody. Let's That's the best presentation there. of that information that I've ever seen, and it was yeah. done very fast. So. Oh, thank you. No, you know what I mean. It was like bang, bang, bang. There you go. It's a corporation. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's simple. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Well, you know you can listen to like uh, Tom Lacavera. He's going to give you the four-hour explanation at the end of it. You're still a little confused about it, uh -huh. but um, but that's like the 30-second version. You know. Yeah. That's called. And it's their own codes. <laughs> you know. You know. God. God leads us to. You know. God leads us is what oh, yeah. I'm going to say. Yes, He does. I wouldn't and do anything that I do without him. So, Chris, yeah. what did you think about her answer? I was pretty amazed by it. Yeah. Chris? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Oh. I, I can get part of it, and I would have to look into, into it further, but uh, if, that, if that would be the explanation that would stand, then it, we're all screwed, really. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, uh, if in today's world, if you're going to fall back and say, well, they can only go in a 10 by 10 area because of this and because of that. And there's been nothing 
that has gone on since then that has changed that equation for us. Right. Pretty much screwed <laughs> because you know we can get attacked, and we don't. And by the con by that standing, man, we get attacked. You got to start calling people up that ain't prepared for it. Right. Yeah. And we're, we're going to get overrun. Okay. What, get overrun wait, like wait, a wait. Right. Let 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 me see. Just let me ask you this, Chris. What do you mean by if we get attacked? Because on two levels of that, first of all, we are pushing back, pushing the corporation back to their 10 square miles. Okay. That is what we're doing when we pass nullification, push the feds off of the private property owners of the Nevada citizens. Right. Um, when we push back against the unlawful gun orders and, and do it as constitutional carry. When we push back against um, NSA spying or stuff like that, that's no, not I'm not, I'm, I'm not. No, I'm. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is, uh, uh, w without putting a tinfoil hat on and going down rabbit holes that we don't need to go down. Right. Uh, say uh, we get attacked. We get a, uh, when the Japanese attacked in World War II. They if didn't we, attack. If, we have a navy we, here. Pardon? Chris, Chris, you know what? You know what the Japanese understood, and they were told. Do not attack the homeland of America because we'll never win. They retreated. They stood back there with their ships and their planes, and they could have come on shore, but they were smarter. You know why? There's nobody in this world will take on the American people. You know why? We have God in heaven on our side. I don't know about the rest of the sinful people and all their craziness, but most of us have repented, and we got the blood of Jesus covering us. You understand what that means? They don't have it. They believe in idols and 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 demons. We don't. Amen. Now I'm going. I'm I'm going to say something with that too, Chris. On the on the question on that on that statement specifically on that statement, since I know what you're talking about. That is so inaccurate, and let me tell you why. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing in that constitution stops the states from having their militias. That's right. Their militias, you have organized and you have unorganized. Your organized are what today is called your National Guard. Right. Okay? Your unorganized are we the people like me. Okay? <laughs> and if we have invaders that come in here, I'm going to be right beside our guys. You and Texas Granny. Yeah, we have a listener named Texas okay. Granny. She'd be right there beside you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so to think just because in up here that, oh, well, our military can't be all over there everywhere. Who are they following marching orders from, Chris? Because they're not doing it from our country. They're following marching orders of the UN and NATO. Do you really want our guys doing that? Or do you want them signing up for the states to protect those states in unity if we, if we needed them for several states, which is the way it was supposed to be in the first place? Right. Right. Get the federal government out of it, get the UN out of it, and get DHS out of it because they all take marching orders from the same way. Right. 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 I, right. No, right. And, 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 and to set the record straight of that, I am not a fan of the UN, and we need to get rid of them and get them out of here. Right. Amen. And <clears throat> DHS, it serves not a whole hell of a lot of a big purpose for in that regard, but if our country were to be attacked by an, a, an external nation or an external force, right. as it stands, look at the composition of what we have today, mm -hmm. and it required a full frontal assault to stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the militias and the organized and un unorganized would not have the capacity to do what our armed forces okay. do. Let me ask you a question. Well, you're well, talking, you're no, talking no, no. nuclear. I think, no, no, had, I, nuclear I think, attack. I, I think. Who do you think I, what, what, the armed forces are? No, hold on, though. I think if we had continued along and done this the constitutional way, Chris, through the last couple hundred years, I think that our militias would have been the ones that did get trained and had all the high tech gear. We just would never have had it as like a federal army. It would have right. been. But, it, it would have been the militias that have all this high tech gear. 
correct. We but to, to, wouldn't have needed to, it to, to begin with. Arc, but we wouldn't be the out the trying to blow the hell out of everybody. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> use the argument that you've you used. know what? If they come here and Kathy, attack our Kathy, country, Kathy, 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 you just okay, stepped all over and trying to answer a question. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. The argument that you, I'm sorry, the argument that you use in the bed. It doesn't matter how we got here. We're here. We need to deal with what we have. Yeah. Right now, and, and we're here. We've got what we've got. And what I'm hearing from a lot of people, it's unconstitutional. We can't. It do, is. Right, but we're here. It, we, we could got just restructure the leadership of the thing and leave and it leave it the way it is, but restructure the leadership. Sudden, everybody, and uh, and here's what I'm getting: it's unconstitutional. You can't do this stuff. Is somebody really going to propose? Really going to propose that we just disband everything? Get rid of it. It's unconstitutional. We can't have that. No, Who just restructure we? the leadership. Well, yeah. of it. Because you uh, know no, what no, 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 no. Just restructure the leadership of it. You know. Through, let, let me ask you right a question. Right now, and not, and I am not arguing ask, that everything. No. I am not arguing that everything is perfect. What I'm, and and everything is is exactly the way it's supposed to be. I'm not taking that position. What I'm taking I got from point A to point B. We're here, and if you're going to come in and you're going to and you're going to start uh, messing with the clockwork. It's 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 going to throw us into turmoil. And Jeff, you're worried about the next two years, and uh, and other people are, and I am, to be honest with you. Uh, what Obama can do, and can you imagine the signal that that would send to the rest of the world if all of a sudden we said, guess what? What we have is unconstitutional, and we're in a state of reorganization right now to try and fix this crap. We are we you have just stuck the stuck the key in the oh, front we, door. We all know that's not going to happen in the next two years. No, anyway. what so, I'm I mean, saying, you know. what I'm saying, is that wouldn't change anything except who pays the paychecks, dear? Who fights those? Americans, my brothers, my sisters, my mothers, my dads. It is the same individuals. Just because the person signing the paycheck is from the 10 Mile Square Corporation doesn't change the fact. It's our guys that are ever here. It is my neighbors. It is the ones down the street. It is your neighbors. It is Vaughn. It is uh, not. Uh, the, the, uh, the federal corporation is a fictitious entity. It does nothing without we the people. Right. And, right. and, I'll, and, I'll, right. and I'll give, right. I'll give right. you an example right. how, they, how, they can, how they could easily sidestep that. Is they're they're collecting taxes from the states, the people in the states. Right. They're going to say that we are the money. We are the money pool. We're taking in your money, and we are doling it out to these people to act as a national defense. That's how they will side sidestep that, and they very well would win that. Absolutely. And IRS is unlawful on its face anyway. It's just basically the collection arm of the private bankers, the Fed. Yeah, well, we're going down rabbit holes, but you see where I'm where I'm going with that. Is hey, there... hey, and certain, you know what? Let me tell you something. If we get to this point that you're talking about, everybody, you, me, um, every person in this country would just like go, oh, no way, no way. They would all group together. We're all brothers. We're all friends. There are a lot of good Christians in this country. We would take care of you, just like we do every day in our normal everyday life, I, I would believe. I'm sorry. I walk around town, I go shopping, and I see the, the, the aptitude that people have to do much of anything. And if the, and if, if the, so feces, if hit you the, have... if the feces hit the windmill, I'm sorry. I can't – I could probably – I don't think I could trust maybe even 2% of – if that of where I live <coughs> would actually do something. I really don't. Oh, Sorry. Not, Chris, but to sit here and, and come up with this negativity, you know what you're trying to say to us? We might as well just quit what we're doing. Let the right. hell come, hell storm come No. And no, that's it. not what I'm saying. I'm, everybody's well, because, saying it's unconstitutional. They can't do, they can't do that. It's yeah, unconstitutional. We need to get rid of it. Yeah. And there has, and everybody's just saying that's how we have to do it. And my, and, or that's what needs to be done. And what I'm that's saying is, okay. It. I will agree with you, but You're instead of just – wait a minute. I'm, sir, I'm instead of just I'm screaming – And they know how I'm going to do it, and then they ain't going to like what I'm going to do. Because I'm no, going to tell the point you stand Hey, Vaughn, hey, you know what, Lynn Vaughn, listen to me. You're a really good giver. You would help your neighbor and feed them, and just like I would do, 
just like we all should do. We're not talking about like destroying this country. We're trying to like help this country. We're you guys are going down talking about a rabbit hole. You guys are going down a big rabbit hole. If anything really happened where our country attacked we the people, then we need to take care of ourselves and we don't need to like be um hurting each other by having this different we, what we need to do is regroup and say, okay, I'm going to, like, um, check my neighbor and see if they need anything. I'm smart enough that I have stuff here. This is what we need to do. We don't need to be, like, combative. So tonight we've gotten a little combative. Lori, I'm sorry to um, um, say combative. this. You misunderstand what stand down means. That means you stop what you're doing. This country has to stand up and tell them to stand down. Right, We're right. not going to tolerate it anymore. That is not an aggression. That is just telling them to stand down. Their reaction, the first drop of blood, it will be all over for this country, okay? Right. They've got to stand down. And I know the patriots are not going to fire the first shot. Right. They're not. And, and, and with, with, Jade, with, with Jade Helm, I, yeah, we should tell them. No, we don't like this. I, that's not that's not my point. But uh, that, just yeah. just can I, can I finish this thought and then you guys can have it and I'll just sit back and but all I want is everybody saying we can't do it. it's unconstitutional about a lot of things we're doing. But no one's got a plan how to fix it in in incremental steps to where we're not left with our asses hanging in the wind if you get my drift on that one. So interject some good ideas. Yeah, but we're we're not getting that. All we're getting is you can't do it. It's unconstitutional. Oh, That's I, what you're oh I love I love the counterman amendment. Good ideas. I think the, I think the counterman amendment would go a long ways to help and untangle some of this. Absolutely. We don't have time. I, We've got to do. I agree, else. Jeff. This movement. Yeah. We have to educate. We have to make sure that we do not, no matter how. Um, angry inside we are about it we have to not portray that because it is so important that we educate and we defeat the psyop because that is where a lot of this anger comes from is right. because of the psyops and it is an intentional divide and conquer and we cannot allow them to win that Amen. No, but there, there is one good point that, that Chris is bringing forward here, and that is when we do finally start untangling these things that are wrong with our republic that have put it on an unconstitutional footing, we're going to have to do so in careful, measured ways to make sure that okay. we, to make sure that we, you know, um, you know, re ha you know, maintain the strength that we have, you know, in the world, you know, because. You know, when you look at what Obama's done to destroy our military in the last six years, and we're at, we're at pre-World War II levels on a lot of our troop levels. All right. Um, you know, so, you know, if we do rebuild that back in a constitutional way, we, we just need to make sure we structure it properly where we're not hampering our ability to quickly ramp that back up and defend ourselves, you know, because that's right. a serious issue. You know? But remember but this, okay, because it seems to me, and I may be wrong, I may be wrong, but this is the way I'm picturing, um, I, that was Jeffrey just talking, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Chris. Okay, so this is what I'm picturing, and like I said, I may be wrong. If I am wrong, correct me, okay, please. Um, but what I, y'all seem to think that everything has to be, um, everybody is, is, if this gets restructured that, you know, Everything's going to dissipate. Everybody's going to go home, and then we have to start from scratch again. No, no, oh. no, no. I was no. just trying to help you understand what he was saying. Right, no, because I'm, I'm, no, I'm not, you're like putting that. us in a group or something. And no, I was just trying to help you understand where he was coming from. That's all. That's what I'm trying to understand. That's yeah. why I'm asking you. Yeah. Because that's the way it sounds, and I may have misunderstood it, like I no, said. Uh, because me, you, again, did, you, did, you, you did, Lori. You totally did. He I can, I, can ex I can explain it succinctly if it would help. Okay, yes, please. Okay, um, we're going to, all of a sudden we're going to remove control from the federal and give it to the states. That's That would be how it would, you, everybody would want it, remove control from federal to state. 
So now we have a nuclear arsenal out there that is controlled by federal. And now, in that changeover period, there's going to be an awful lot of confusion on who gets the codes, who coordinates all the, you know, who coordinates the per, per, uh, permission to use it if we're attacked or to use it in self-defense. There, and that's my thing: is there's there's going to be a transition period. There has to be. Okay, and w- I hear no plans of how would we go about doing this. All I hear is we can't do this because it's unconstitutional. Well, I'm sorry, we're doing it right now. Is it unconstitutional? Maybe, probably, but. Don't sit there and just scream it's unconstitutional. Tell me how we would fix it. We would we would save this nation as a whole without mm-hmm. leaving us hanging out there because there's going to be a very long transition period to write everything, but I'm not hearing anybody coming forward and saying, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to, how we need to fix it. I'm just hearing, we can't do this because it's unconstitutional. Right. Fix yeah. it. Well, I agree okay. with that. Now, I'm sorry, you, you're, you're, you're I, talking about your politicians, right? Not we here on the Justice would, show. Any kind of any kind of transfer like that would have to involve the people and the politicians. You can't. Okay. You wouldn't be able to do it with just you. You couldn't. It would I, have to involve I totally a lot more than just the, that. First than all, that. Uh, yeah. First of all, yeah. the there is a huge difference, like I said, between the corporation and the real United States of America. The United States of America never, uh, as far as the people side, the real constitutional side, okay, that never actually was um, disbanded, if you will. There's just nobody sitting in their seats, and there are individuals who are working on that as we speak, and some are delegates and have already met and and um, established certain things with the UN, and I can't go any further than that, okay, but. Um, I will tell you there are individuals working very hard to reestablish the seats of the federal part of it, of the constitutional federal part of it, the real United States of America federal end of it versus what you're thinking about, about the breakup of the states. What I'm referring to, and I, and I think um, maybe that it's a little bit of a confusion, is mm. the United States. States itself is not the United States of America. That is not the landmass. That is not the law. Uh, that is not the dirt. That is a fictitious entity. It does not exist. Right. It's simply a corporation. Okay. It is. All that okay. is is like taking Walmart and making Walmart no oh, longer yeah, in control of our military guys. And once um, the other gets completely 100% receded, then those same individuals that took orders under that corporation, under that fraud, would actually be taking orders from the lawful federal the United States of America. So we wouldn't be giving up anything and they would be We accrued. wouldn't be giving up anything. It would be so going gotta back have, they got, down right. the way it's supposed to be. Well, that makes, and, that makes perfect sense. And Chris so. is right. Chris's concerned. He just made a statement here a while back that he can't go outside and walk around people and find anybody that he would even trust to be around in, in a bad situation. And I understand what the man is saying. Right. You know, oh, yeah. I know. But they just don't understand if what you're – what what you're saying is we're not we're not doing anything to our constitution because the constitution ain't never gone nowhere. We're right. just going to change those, give them a pink slip from the real people, and say thank you for your job. Would you please leave our country now, and we'll take over from here, exactly. sir. You well, over, here, right. over here and get the soldiers in <clears throat> line. We're going to tell them to take a vacation for a while right. to be with their family. They've been fighting for too many years. And we'll let the whole world cool down a little bit. That's right. what we can do. Exactly. The real sitting Congress in Congress assembled will be reestablished. Not this fictitious Congress that we all see and we think these politicians, we think we vote for them and this, that, and the other. Let me tell you, they know. Okay? They know. I know they know too, Lori. I know they know too. The the <laughs> paradigms, the, the false paradigms, the whole line. 
the the unlawful 14th amendment that just wow right. i've got congressional records that would blow people's minds and we'll go into that a different night <laughs> if you want to right because um, we're like way over time now but anyway yeah, i'm, so I'm like way crazy. over bed oh. time too yeah but Hey, Lori, I, I got to thank you so much. Um, oh, you're wonderful. Sweetheart. Yeah, thanks thank for you. being such a trooper. You've been on here for four hours and two minutes. <laughs> and you know what? I've enjoyed every second of her. There you go. Every second. Awesome. Well, listen, hey. thanks to all you guys who participated tonight. And uh, thanks for coming on on short notice, Lori. It was very enjoyable, very knowledgeable. Um, enjoyed a lot of the thought provoking things that you brought up. And, um, you know, like I said, I just appreciate all you guys for participating. Well, you're and, and, welcome, and thank you for having me. It was very nice meeting everybody. And I, I appreciate your time, Lori. Some, I'll ask, I'll ask weird questions of you, and I'll no, listen to you. No, it's great. That. And <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a learning experience, and I appreciate it. Oh, not a problem, and it's great. I love being asked questions, Chris, so don't ever think you're going to hurt my feelings by asking me. Well, what Chris has done over the last year is he has frequently <laughs> he's frequently brought the contrarian view on the air, mm -hmm. even when it's not his personal view, because right. it, it just makes people talk and think. Yeah, right. but Chris Absolutely. gets what? So it's you, very you. interesting, and it gets a lot of the it gets a lot of the stuff out on the air for people to talk, you know, and right. you can use their brain. Right. We give, we'll we give Chris a job to go around as an ambassador because he's got that kind of quality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that worked, and that worked better than meow. <laughs> 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 Love you all. Honey. All right, guys, I'm rolling Love the credit music. You guys have a wonderful evening and uh, let's tee this up again tomorrow night.